Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about logarithmic functions. And so we're going to be doing a few of these objectives in this first part, where we'll change from an exponential statement to a log statement and vice versa. We'll also be evaluating logarithmic expressions and determining the domain and range. So let me go ahead and define what a logarithmic function is, and then I'll explain where this is coming from. So a log function with the base we're going to call a, a has to be positive, it also can't be 1, is this expression here. y equals log base a of x. And where this comes from is this statement here. Okay, so what this means, if you notice the correlation between these two, is that if you had x equals a to the y, that's going to be the same or equivalent to y equals log base a of x you're solving for the exponent, okay? So this is new. Up until you've learned about logarithms, you haven't actually been able to solve for exponents. And now we know that that exponent equals the log. So log base a of x is the exponent from this statement. So for a quick example, if we had something like uh, 8 equals 2 to the third power, then that exponent is the log. So 3, the exponent, is log base 2 of 8. And so the base is the base in both of these statements. It's the number 2 for my example. The exponent is always what the log equals. The log always equals the exponent. And then the result from the expression here is what we call the argument, which is in this position right here after the word log. All right, now why are we learning about this now is maybe a good question where this came from at this point in your math career it's because just recently you learn about inverse functions so you learn about inverse functions the opposite of a function and then once you learn about that you also learn next about exponential functions okay and so logs come right after that exponential functions because they are the inverses of those exponential functions so if you had an exponential function let's say we had something like our function was f of x equals 2 to the x and to find the inverse of that remember that process you swap x and y so you would say that this is x over here and then I put a y where the x used to be and then you solve for y. That's the process for finding the inverse function. But if you look at this, you say, well, I've never solved for an exponent before. And so that is why we learn about logs when we do, because they allow us to solve for the exponent for the first time. Solve for the exponent. OK, so that's our definition. So let's take a look at this first one here we have that y equals log base 7 of x, meaning that x equals 7 to the y, the y power. So the log always is equal to the exponent from the expression. So for example, if we had 2 equals log base 7 of 49, it means 2 is the exponent. And so if you rearrange, you see that 7 to the second power is 49, which is a true statement. How about this one? y equals log base 4 of x, meaning that 4 to the y is equal to the number x. And so if we want to say negative 1 equals log base 4 of 1 fourth, it's because negative 1 is the exponent on 4. So if we put that negative 1 on the exponent position for 4, 4 to the negative 1 power, remember how that goes? You move it down to the denominator and take off the minus sign. That's just 1 fourth. All right, so now let's practice changing an exponential function or statement to a log statement. And so we have three options here, and we're going to rearrange and change them all to log expressions. So all of our results are going to have the word log in it, in the answer. Okay, so remember though, also for your log expressions, the base has to be positive and it can't be 1. Okay, so on our first one, 1.6 to the third power equals to w. Remember the power, the exponent, is what the log equals. So the 3 goes here on the other side of the equal sign. 
And then your base is always the base. It's going to stay the base on the word log. So it's going to be written down underneath the word log. And then what the result of that expression equals is this argument position right here. Okay, so it goes after the word log after your base. And sometimes if you want, you can put it in parentheses. All right, the next one, notice the exponent is u. So that's going to be what the log equals. So start there. And then your base is e. So your base is still e right here. Log base e. And then the result was 25. So log base e of 25 equals the exponent u. All right, try the last one before I show you. The base is b. The exponent is 5. And the expression equals 27. Okay, so hopefully you got 5, which is the power, equals the log base b of 27. All right, now we're going to go the opposite direction. So now we're going to go to exponential form from log form. So this time we're not going to see the word log in any of our answers. We're going to just have an exponent expression. So we have the first one, the base was b, so the base is still b. The other side of the equal sign is always the exponent. So the 3 is going to go up in the exponent position. And then the expression equals 8 because that's what we were taking the log of, log base b of 8. Okay, try the next one. Notice the base is e. The log equals negative 2. So that's going to be your exponent. And so we have e to the negative 2 equals the argument of c, which was after the word log. So that's why it equals c. All right, try the last one before I show you. And recognize what the base is. The log always equals the exponent. And then the argument is what's on the other side of the equal sign. So hopefully you got 4 to the w exponent or power equals 6. Now that we know how to write back and forth between log form and exponential form, because now you can go either direction, now we can start solving some log expressions, evaluate them. So evaluate this first expression. So the question right now is what does this equal? And so what I like to do is I actually like to put a variable there and that way I can solve and rewrite using that variable. Okay, so this says 3 to what power equals 81? That's what this log statement says. When you're doing math, you want to always think about it. How does this translate into a sentence that makes sense to me? And just these symbols, log base 3 of 81 is asking this sentence, 3 to what power is 81? So when you ask yourself that way, then it's easier to figure out. So what you do is you change from log form to exponential form, and that way you can see visually what you just said as a sentence and then you can solve and sometimes you can tell just by looking but what another way to do it is to break down the bigger number 81 you can say if you're not sure you could say that's 9 times 9 and each 9 is 3 times 3 and so this is 3 to the fourth and then we had a property from our last videos that we talked about the property says if we have a base to a power equals the same base, but supposedly to a different power, then those exponents or powers are really the same number. So that's a property that we learned before. So from this statement here, we know that the power must have been 4. So y must have been 4. And so that was what we set the log equal to. The log equaled the exponent. And so that's the answer. Log base 3 of 81 equals 4. And if you ever want to check, you just rearrange it and you say your base 3 to this power here. Does that really equal my argument? And yes, it does. Okay, let's try the next one. So log base 5 of 1 over 125 as a translating into a sentence means 5 to what power equals 1 over uh, 125? And so we're trying to solve for that exponent. So we go ahead and put a variable there, like I chose y here. So log base 5 of 125, it, we're looking for what that equals. And then we change this to exponential form. 
the base was 5. The unknown exponent is what we're calling y, and we know that that result is 1 over 125. And now we just solve. Okay, so on this one, it's not as clear to see like, okay, like the last one, 3 to the fourth power was 81. So off to the side here, we have the work why this exponent is negative 3. So 5 to a power would be in the denominator. So 5 to some power in the denominator because the 125 was down in the denominator. And so you say, well, how many times do I multiply 5 to get 125? And again, that's some, if you're not sure, you can always break it down. You can say this is 25 times 5, and then break this down. So it's a total of 3 times. So that's why this is 1 over 5 to the third. And then you don't want the, to leave the base 5 in the denominator because you want to be able to use your property that says if the bases are equal, then so are the exponents. And so you have to bring that 5 back up to the numerator. And all you have to do in that case is put the negative on to the exponent. And so that's why 1 over 125 is exactly the same thing as 5 to the negative 3 power. And so from here, we know that that missing exponent was negative 3, meaning that log Base, 20, uh, by base 5 of 1 over 125, the answer to that is negative 3. And then, all, as always, to check, you just say, is my base to that power on the other side of the equal sign with the log equals? Does that really equal 1 over 125, the argument? And yes, it does. So the last thing we'll do in this video is to talk about the domain and the range of a log function. And a quick reminder, what we said at the beginning here is that what we learned was uh, we had an exponential function and log functions are the inverses of those. So the inverse of an exponential function is a log function. And so this would be your log function here. And why I'm reminding you of this is because the domain of a log function is the range of the exponential function and vice versa. The range of the log function is the domain of an exponential function. And we learned that when we were learning about inverse functions because these are opposites of each other. So what was the domain is now the range, and what was the range is now the domain. So for a log function, you can plug in anything greater than zero, and what comes out of the function is all real numbers. So just remember, you cannot plug in anything zero or negative into a logarithmic function. So the domain is um, z greater than zero, and then what comes out of your function is any value. So let's practice this. We're going to find the domain of the following functions. So the first one, we have the log base 3 of x plus 2. So the argument is x plus 2. And that's what we're, we're trying to figure out what can we plug in for x that will give us real number answers. And so remember that the argument, which you can plug into the function, has to be more than zero. So all you do is you set that argument greater than zero. Whatever is in that argument position, argument position, you just set it greater than zero. And then simplify and solve if you can. And so in this one, we just subtract two, and we get that x has to be greater than two. So the domain in interval notation is negative two to infinity. Now the question didn't ask for this, but I just want to make sure that you're understanding how this goes back and forth between exponential form. So just FYI on letter A, in exponential form, that would be 3 to some power, meaning this was the power, equals x plus 2. Okay, didn't ask for that, but just so you can relate what we're talking about in log form to exponential form. All right, part B, so the domain, again, uh, for this one, you have to say the argument here has to be greater than zero. Now, something to mention really quick. If there's no number here for the base, if it's missing, it's actually an invisible 10. So anytime you see log and there's no base on it, it means log base 10. Okay, and then that's what's true on the uh, calculators. So the button on the calculator that's there's no usually some calculators have it uh, but if there's no base on it it means base 10. okay so we're interested in the argument the 5x 5 plus x over 5 minus x 
set that greater than zero. And just a quick reminder on how you solve this. We did solve inequalities quite a bit in the past. Uh, if you, you, could, you have to do two things. You solve this for x, so you multiply both sides by the denominator. And if you do that really quick, we're going to get 5 plus x equals 0. That's how we get x is negative 5. But then also you have to say, when might this be undefined? And it's undefined if the bottom is 0. So that's when x is positive 5. And then it, when you want to determine when this is greater than 0, you're going to put those numbers on your number line and create like neighborhoods around it. And you'll check over here, a number over here. You'll check a number in between here. And then you'll check a number over here. And then you just plug them in to this expression and you see which parts are going to be greater than 0 or not. So what you would find if you plug in something like, let's say, negative 6, that region's not going to be greater than 0. If you plug in something in between negative 5 and 5, like say you plug in 0, that is going to be greater than 0, so this is going to work. And that's going to be a positive number over there. And then same thing if you plug in something over in the third neighborhood, like positive 6, it's also not going to be greater than 0. So that's how, quick reminder, how we solve that inequality. And so the answer here for the domain is negative 5 to 5, any number in between, and we're strictly greater than 0, so parentheses on those numbers instead of brackets. All right, on the last one, the argument is absolute value of x. And so on that one, remember what we said was the argument just has to be greater than 0. Well, absolute value of x is always greater than 0 by, by definition. This turns every number positive when you do this. And so all we have to do is make sure that x can't be 0 because the argument has to be strictly greater than 0. And so 0 is the only problem. So we want to say all real numbers except 0. So in interval notation, that just looks like negative infinity to 0, jump over 0, and start on the other side of 0 and say to infinity. So that's the domain for that one. All right, so that's going to be it for this first part on our logarithmic functions. Quick reminder of the definition. We know that y is log base a of x, meaning that this is the exponent when we have an exponential expression. So it means that the base a was raised to that exponent that the logarithmic function equals. And then the argument is whatever is over here after the word log. And you can go both directions with this definition. So you can start with log form and go to exponential form, or you can start with exponential form and go to log form. The domain of an exponent uh, log function, the argument has to be greater than or equal, uh, sorry, just strictly greater than zero. So you just set that greater than zero and solve. In this case, it just looks like x, but we just worked through examples where it was more than just x. And then also something to mention is a reminder on the notation. If you see log by itself, like let's say log of x, it means there's an invisible base of 10. And then I didn't mention this yet, but I want to tell you now, and it'll come up in the next video. If you have base e, like we saw a few times in this video, there's a sh another way to write that. It's actually called a natural log. So it's ln of x. So whenever you see log base e, we don't tend to write log base e. We write ln, which means natural log, and that represents log base e. So if you ever see ln x, just know that it's log base e of x. And then the last thing to say is just remember that the argument has to be greater than 0, but then also the base here, a, the base is always positive and not 1. So the base is no negative numbers, and also we are not interested in 1 being the base because that would just be like 1 to some power, which is not very interesting because it always stays 1. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.